This Adobe XD design is one we'll be converting to EditorX. It's also one that I've manually coded out in the past. So this will be a good comparison of what it's like creating a design like this in no code tools. Let's just jump straight into it. So this right here is the design we're looking at. We have a number of variations. We've got the desktop, we've got the mobile, and we've got actually the mobile menu over here as well. But what we can see immediately is that we've got a bit of a grid structure happening for this design. If you guys want to check out this design yourselves, you can jump on the front and mentor website to grab this. And so I'll add a link in the description where you guys can do that. But let's take a quick look at the design itself to see what we'll be building in Editor X. The first thing we have is this hero section here with the logo and the menu at the top right here. We've got our hero text here as well as our hero image and an arrow pointing down. Next we move on to this grid structure where we've got alternating sections with images and text happening and the text is centered. Finally we have this near footer section where we've got some client testimonials as well as a small gallery of images and our footer with some social links and menu. So I think this should be okay to set up. We'll jump into Editor X now to get a draft page up and running and have a look at how we can move some of these sections across. So I opened up the Editor X website and I selected to create a new site. I'm gonna build this using the Editor X platform and I'm gonna select other for the type of website. We'll start off with a blank canvas here and we'll load into Editor X. We've got our essentials of header, footer, and body. So what I wanna grab now are these assets of images and logos so that we can place in. These will be part of the front-end mentor download assets, and I'm going to start uploading them. We'll start with the hero image here, which I'll be using as the background. I'll create this image here as an asset that I'll upload into Editor X and I'll select to use this. This is just the blue background here with the orange and I'm gonna expand this out to utilize the full screen. That's one method to do it, but because of the way that this design is structured, what I actually want to do is have it resize so that the orange is always in view. So in order to do this, we're going to change the way we import this image. I'm going to have it wrapped inside of a container. After that, I'll make sure that the width for the image is always 100% so that it resizes with the screen. Finally, I'll remove any additional margins so it's directly in the center. Now we can take a look at the header. What I wanna do here is turn it into a sticky header. This allows it to overflow with our content for our hero image here, which works quite well. Now that we've got this working, we can look at updating the logo. The logo here is an SVG, and what we can do is actually upload the SVG that we have in our content files here. So I'm gonna do just that. Currently, it's an SVG, so I'm literally going to drag and drop and upload it over here. It is a little bit small, so what I'm gonna do is resize it and increase the size just a little bit. Then I'm going to center the docking position. Next, we can have a look at the menu over here, which has a few items as well as a contact us button. What I'm gonna do is create these in manually. You can select any type of link right now because we don't have any additional pages, but you'd really want to link these up properly. So for the time being, I'm just gonna probably make them scroll positions or anchor links. And next I'll actually customize their design so that they have a white text color on the background of this blue hero image. You'll notice that I didn't add the contact link and that's because we're gonna add this in separately as a button after we design this menu. We're gonna add this off to the right hand side and we're gonna make sure that it's docked properly and we're also going to update it to have the same styling as in the design by having this white background. So far, we're off to a good start and we've got the main section here above the fold nearly done. Now it's time to add the header text here, which says we are creatives. When adding this text, we'll need to customize it a little bit so that it's the same as our design. So the very first thing we'll want to do is make sure that it's in all caps. I've made the text color white and then I'm gonna position it to be just in the middle of the blue section here between the orange and our header. Now for this, I want the arrow to be placed in here as well. So I'm going to import this arrow and we're gonna do this by selecting to add a new shape. And then we're going to upload the arrow as one of the shape components we'll be using here for this design. This should be placed in between the blue section and the orange. 
So in order to do this, I'm just going to move the We Are Creatives up a little bit. And then I'm also going to move the arrow down a little bit so it's halfway into the orange. Next, I want to make sure that the responsive design works for this section because right now, while the header as well as the image works, the actual text and arrow does not. So what I'm going to do is have a look at different ways we can dock this and resize the text so that it works. Doesn't matter which viewport it's on. So the very first thing we'll want to have a look at is the text itself. If you select to change the text, you have an option for text scaling. When you do this, you can see that the text updates depending on the viewport. The text itself is currently a little bit too small. So I'm going to increase its range so that depending on the viewport, it works a little bit better and closer to our design. Now let's move on to the next section, which is this alternating grid of images and content. We can select our sections here and we can add a new section and select the grid option. What I'm thinking of is just a two by two grid to start off with. And what we want to do is make sure that the grid stays consistent depending on the viewport of our device. So I'm going to select to do viewport. I'm going to do 50% and this should allow it to have that grid structure. I'll also do this for the other section of the grid and make sure that this is 50% too. And the result is a perfect four by four grid with a screen size that adapts depending on what you're resizing. With that done, we can now import the very first image, an egg, into the right hand side. We'll select to add an image and we'll upload the egg image here into our media. And we're just going to expand it out so it fits in nicely. It's not perfectly centered, so what I'm going to do is select the focal point here and just move it up a little bit so that the egg is in the center. And I'm happy with that. We're next going to have a look at this transform your brand text center, which is a H2 element with a paragraph below as well as a button. What I'm going to do is place a container, which I'm going to center more or less and add the text components inside of that container. And we're going to use this to place them into the center of the left hand side of the grid. Most of the content here fits quite nicely. So all I'm going to do is use the quick add elements to add in the header as well as the paragraph as well as the button. And that's done in almost no time at all. Next, I just want to reposition some of them so that they adapt similar to the original design. And this means that we're just going to add some more margin between the header itself, the paragraph text as well as the button. Finally, I want to update the docking so that this position for this container will stay responsive when we resize the page. Now that it's in position, I'll change the background to white so that it just looks like it's there centered in this section of the grid. I'll also add in some margins here between the buttons and the paragraphs. And in terms of the resizing, they're okay for the desktop size. We'll probably have to update them for the responsive design of the tablet and mobile. But for the time being, that works. Let's move on to the next part of our grid structure, which is this red kind of a pink image of a cup. What I'm thinking is to replicate what we've created on the left side. So we're really going to just copy and paste this and it's ready to go, which is pretty amazing how quickly you can get that up and running. I'll update the text and as soon as I do, I've got this section ready to go. If we do a progress report, we can see that we've replicated this Adobe XD design almost perfectly. There are a few customizations we'll look at later on, but let's move on to the next section. Here, we're going to create a two by one grid where we're gonna have the graphics design on the left and the photography on the right. We can add this as a new section, but I just wanna customize the current section and just add an additional row here so that it's running the same as we had previously. I'll do the row here at 50% view width and we can see that this section is ready to go. We'll have to find the green background with the red cherry. So let's jump into the directory of images here and let's find and import that into our design here. So what I'm going to do is select to add a new image. And for this image, I'm going to change the image with an upload of these cherries. Now that it's uploaded, I'll select to use this image and I'll expand it out to use this entire grid section. This is looking quite good. And all we need to do now is add in one more image on the right hand side. And for this image, we'll just replicate the steps we did previously. So by using this orange, for example, we've got this section up and running and we just need to add the text elements. There's room already below, so I don't have to change the focal point for these sections. But instead, what I'm going to do is copy out one of our containers from above and resize it and customize it a little bit for this section. 
In the design, this was a little bit higher up with a little bit less text, and it also didn't have a large container. So I'm gonna resize this container, removing the manual height here, and then positioning it just below the cherries. I'll also remove the background color here so that it fits it nicely, and update the text to be smaller as well as centered so that it can fit in nicely here as well. With that done, I can simply copy and paste this entire section over to the right hand side and it can replicate the same sort of topography that we had previously. But for this topography, I'll just update the text that we have from our design here. And the only real remaining thing to do is to update the colors for this text. If we take a look at the design itself, we'll notice that the colors are a little bit slanted to a dark shade of the green and a dark shade of the blue. So what I'm gonna do is grab the hex value here from our XD design file and actually manually add those hex values in for the text sections. The normal way would be to probably do a style guide, selecting these colors to be used. But since these colors are just once off, I don't see a real full point to create an entire style guide around them, so just adding them in manually will serve our purpose. Now we can move on to the client testimonial section by creating a new section with a 3x1 grid. This is very similar to the design where we just have three different element components here on the left, middle, and right-hand side, and each one of those is one example of a testimonial. I'll start by creating the main header here, which just says client testimonials, and what I can do here is create our very first testimonial and then copy-paste them across, similar to how I've done in previous sections. So let's expand this section out and create a container here for this testimonial. I'll center it and move it into about the same position that it is in the Adobe XD design file. And once I've done that, I can start adding in the content such as the avatar, the text, as well as the author of that testimonial. To create the avatar, I'm going to create a new image here and I'm gonna select the avatar from our design assets. It'll start off a little bit too big, but we can resize this and even select the amount of pixels that we're going to use. In the design assets file, this is using 72 by 72 pixels, so I'm gonna replicate the same side of height and width, and that's more or less in position now in our container. The next part is the testimonial itself, which is text centered and just below the avatar image. So I'll place this in this section container and it's more or less done. Finally, we've got the author. Now for the author, I wanna create this more as a H-block title, maybe a H4 element or something like that. It is slightly smaller, so what I'm gonna do is most likely resize the text to be about the same size as the design asset file with that font bold. We'll also put in the position of this testimonial by copying out the testimonial text itself and placing this below the author name. Now, I'm pretty happy with the design so far. Let's customize the colors so that they're working the same as our Adobe XD design. And here, I'm just gonna pull in those hex values once again, and we can get this section pretty much done in terms of the topography color. Finally, I removed the background color, and this is now a fluid section. We can have a look at the positioning of the text, because before we would replicate it to other sections, we wanna make sure that it's correct. Now here, I'm just going by eye to make sure that there is enough margin and padding between each section, and once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna copy paste each section across the grid that we can then customize with the different authors. Now the task is as simple as updating the text for each one of the authors, which I'm gonna go through, as well as the imagery for each authors, and this client testimonial section is done. Now it's time to get started on the footer, which we have over here. I'm going to create a structure here for firstly the images that are located in the footer. And these images are just the four by one grid, which should be relatively easy to set up. Amazingly, as soon as I added the grid, the right size for its height showed up, which was great. So now all I'm gonna do is grow through each image and upload them in the respected grid area. Once this is done, we can have a look at the next section, which is this green section here below, it contains the logo as well as some social links and the menu as well. So I'm going to copy paste the text background here for the background of this footer section. And I'm gonna expand it out a little bit so that it has room for all the content. I want to add this logo here that we have for Sunnyside. We have the SVG for this, but I also have it up in my header. So I'm simply gonna copy and paste it below. 
I can update the background for that to actually be the same as the background color we're using for the SVG in the design file. And after I've updated that, I can simply move around some of the other text components to make room for the menu and the social links which we'll be using. So for the menu, I can copy that from the header as well and simply update the alignment and positioning of that similar to how I did with the logo. We want this menu to also use that dark green for the background color of the text, so I'll update those values too. Now it's time to add the social links. We have each one of those social links in SVG format in our assets folder. So what we can do here is create a container that has a grid which can essentially hold each one of them. Now, a simple way to do this is creating it just over here and then importing those icons in and then setting the color and the size that they'll be using. But there's also another method that is possible to get this done. And that is by simply adding the social bar here that we can select from our quick elements and placing it in below. It actually works pretty much the same way and we can customize the size of the social bar icons as well as the icons that we're using and their arrangement which makes this process much faster with the exact same results. And here we're more or less complete. We've finished up our footer and we can now have a look and compare our original design from Adobe XD with our design here from Editor X. On the left side, we have Editor X, and on the right, we have Adobe. Above the fold, they have the same menu and hero section, and then below the fold, we have this grid structure for the content itself. Now, grids like this are also quite useful because they can collapse into mobile responsive viewports quite easily. Moving on, we have the client testimonials, as well as the gallery here on the right-hand side, and the footer as well. Now the recreation of all these design assets only took about 20 minutes or so. And while I did time-lapse some of the sections just for easier viewing for you, hopefully this should give you a good idea of what it's like using Editor X to convert a design from Adobe XD. I hope you guys enjoyed this Adobe XD to Editor X video. In terms of my own insights into Editor X and no code, I found that some of the more complicated things that I often did in code, like for example positioning and grid, was much more simple using Editor X. I also found that responsive design was much easier too. It's still something I'm learning, so I'm going to have more insights as time goes on, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.